You're watching Obama in Springfield. The President Returns, a News Channel 20 special report. We were willing to forge compromises in pursuit of a larger goal. We were practical when we needed to be. Good evening and welcome to the Illinois State Capitol for a very special expanded presentation of News Channel 20 at 6. I'm Adam Reif, State House reporter Jordan Abadea here, and we are covering President Barack Obama's historic visit to the capital city all half hour. We have a lot of live interviews coming up. We'll also have some analysis of the president's address. Jordan, let's start off. First of all, you were in the chamber, in the balcony, watched the president walk right in. What was the energy like for you and for those on the floor? Well, today has really felt like a marathon, so the energy is definitely... Is it 630 already? It's <laughs> definitely waned here at the Capitol, but earlier today, it was a buzz with energy. Uh, all the lawmakers had to come through security today, but no one was complaining. There were no complaints. Everyone understood the historic nature of this event. Uh, it was very busy in the House chambers. A lot of people milling about, Governor Rauner, one of them. Uh, a lot of the constitutional officers were also present. It was definitely uh, a very prominent feeling of this is a big deal and we all are going to respect that despite our politics. We felt like it was a collegial atmosphere, especially when the president started talking. He came out to thunderous applause when House Speaker Michael Madigan introduced him. It took him a moment to get the crowd to quiet down because both sides of the chamber were just on a standing ovation, correct? Yeah, look, it's... He is the son of Illinois, as Speaker Madigan said, and you know, it, it's been a while since we've had a president and someone this prominent. And so, yeah, I think everyone was excited to see him, Republicans as well as Democrats. There were a lot of applause lines for both sides of the aisle. We'll get to some of the highlights. We also want to mention, if you didn't catch the president's speech, the entire hour address will be online at newschannel20.com. Let's first dive into what the theme of the message was from President Obama, and that, of course, was working together and compromise. Take a listen. We've always gone through periods when our democracy seems stuck. And when that happens, we have to find a new way of doing business. We're in one of those moments. We've got to build a better politics, one that's less of a spectacle and more of a battle of ideas, one that's less of a business and more of a mission, one that understands the success of the American experiment rests on our willingness to engage all our citizens in this work. And that starts by acknowledging that we do have a problem. All right, you hear from President Obama again, the theme from him working together, talking about all the citizens. There was a time when the president talked about all the different locations throughout the state, Galesburg, Quad Cities, talked about hog farmers in downstate, and of course, the people from the city of Chicago, talking about the diversity in the city and how the lawmakers need to work for the people and really get, get something done. Obviously, the reason the president is, is here is the budget address, the budget impasse. Yeah, you know, the president spent time as a state senator before becoming a U.S. senator, and I think he understands that the message that he was bringing here to the Capitol today about bridging partisan divide and really coming together to work for people. He knows that he's giving it to a General Assembly that has gone 222 days without passing a budget that is still very far apart on reforms and revenue and things to move the state forward. And so I think as part of his legacy tour to say goodbye and really come back and give an anniversary speech, sort of, uh, he also knew that he was giving a speech to people to say, you guys really need to get your acts together. One of the things we saw the president start off with was a lot of self-deprecating humor. He talked about getting hazed as a freshman senator, talked about uh, one of the veteran lawmakers asking if he was Irish with a name like Obama. Is there an apostrophe in there? He really, I think, brought himself to the level of the lawmakers, saying, I've been there before, I've struggled to get things done, I've worked hard to try and compromise, and we did accomplish things years ago. It's time to try for that now. This was classic Obama. This is, uh, I think during some of his presidency, we lost a little bit of this President Obama feel. This was the Obama from 
back before he was even president. It's very self-deprecating, making jokes, going off script, and he really does this like a lot of other people can't. So it really worked for him today, and I think that humor and bringing it down to a lower level really helps people relate to him, and despite sometimes the politics in the room. The president made two scheduled appearances, the first here at the state capitol. The second was at the Hoagland Center for the Arts to address some supporters, and this, again, not open to the public, tickets going out and friends and people who have been friendly to the Democratic Party here in Illinois. Let's get ready to hear that from President Obama at the Hoagland Center. If we thought that he was letting his hair down at the state capitol, when he got to in front of his home crowd at the Hoagland Center, he certainly had some fun. Take a listen. There are a lot of things that pull us apart. But despite all that, every day I meet somebody who reminds me about why I'm so proud to do what I'm doing, why I'm so glad I went into public service. A lot of people in that audience certainly loving what they heard from President Obama. A friendly audience. Absolutely. We heard someone yell out four more years. He said, mm -mm, no way. Not only is it not allowed in the Constitution, he said, Michelle will kill me. So that's off the table four more years. But he also addressed a crying baby in the audience saying, I'm tired too. I feel that way too. It was really work in the crowd. I think this is probably the first visit we are going to see of very many to come where he's going to really outline how he's going to interact in the country and become a president to citizen and what his role as a citizen is going to be once he leaves the White House. And I think we're starting to get that. He's, he's going to be, uh, I think, someone who's going to try and bridge these divides. He says it's the biggest regret of his presidency that politics has become more partisan. And so I think this is something that he's probably going to take on once he becomes a citizen and is no longer president. We're going to dig into this a little bit later in the show as we talk to lawmakers who are in the chamber. Talked briefly with Dr. Redfield, Dr. Ken Redfield from UIS earlier today, and he said it's time to see if President Obama will go the way of George W. Bush for now, who is content to retire out of the public eye, or if perhaps he becomes a Jimmy Carter who stays active in politics. And certainly if today's any indication, it looks like President Obama will continue to work for some reforms, some things he wants to see in the United States. He called for three bullet points at the end of his speech to make a better politics. We heard that phrase over and over from the White House as they pre prepared to have President Obama come to Springfield. Calling out some myths that he said really take place in politics. Uh, we did hear some of the partisan uh, remarks when he talked about that he is a progressive Democrat and that he went off and listed the principles. Uh, one of That's the a standing th ovation for yeah. one half of the room, <laughs> right. wasn't it? One of the things that is interesting, it, being in the room, you didn't see this on the pool feed because it focuses on the president, but it was a very interactive speech. You had people standing up at some points, clapping at others, uh, half of the room coming up, Republicans standing up at some points. So at some points, everyone was standing. And so I think it, it was definitely a, a more low key event than I think a lot of people anticipated. There was a lot of interaction. For those who are familiar with President Obama in the suit and tie in that shot from the State of the Union, this was not that address. This was more fun, as we said, friends calling out members of the General Assembly, giving them a hard time, reminding them that he too was given a hard time way back when. But uh, again, the president did come around and hit some very specific messages he wanted to relay to Illinois and the country as a whole. We'll get to some of those as we continue our special expanded coverage here on News Channel 20. We're back in just a moment from the Illinois State Capitol. You're watching Obama in Springfield. The President Returns, a News Channel 20 special report. And it convinced me that if we just approached our national politics the same way the American people approach their daily lives, at the workplace, at the Little League game, at church or the synagogue, with common sense and a commitment to fair play and basic courtesy, that there is no problem that we couldn't solve together. Welcome back to News Channel 20's special presentation at the Illinois State House as we cover President Barack Obama's historic return to the state capitol. He worked here for seven years, joined, of course, by State House 
reporter Jordan Abadea. Jordan, we heard again in that uh, soundbite right there from the president evoking the common person again, talking about the people throughout the state doing their jobs, doing their jobs and working for their families, saying that lawmakers need to do the same thing. You were in there in the chamber. Reaction has been pouring in all afternoon and evening long. What was it like for you to talk to the people who heard that speech? What was lawmakers' reaction? So a lot of lawmakers have really said that this is a historic event and it's really overrode any of the politics that happened here at the state house, especially this very divisive environment that we're in right now. Uh, what we heard a lot today too from people in the gallery because it was invitation only to sit up there in the gallery. We heard a lot of people, amen, a lot of yes, yes. That interactive yes, crowd you talked about. Yes, thank you, President clapping from the gallery and these are people who are impacted by the budget impasse uh, and they well, you know, we had a quick chat as we were all walking down the stairs and it was, hey, you know, the president really talked about things that are important to us. He talked about helping the poor and social service agencies. And those people are really struggling right now in this state. And so I think they looked at his message and they were very appreciative that he was giving lawmakers an idea of how to move forward. State Senator Kwame Raul is one of those who reacted. And interestingly enough, he's the one who took over for President Obama once he went to the U.S. Senate. He is now uh, the district rep senator, pardon me, for the uh, for the Chicago district there. He had a lot to say after the president's address, and we talked to him earlier in this week about what it means for the president coming back. He said he's probably a little embarrassed by the state house situation, but he's going to come and encourage people and to work together. he actually got to show President Obama his old office because Senator Kwame Raul is in that office now. So he there was a picture of uh, President Obama sitting on the desk in his old office. Waiting there. for him. That's a pretty nice touch. Let's take a listen here to what Senator Raul had to say. Well, it reminded me of his words to me uh, my first day down here, uh, this veto session of 2004 where uh, we had a chance for a one-on-one -on -one conversation and, and what was his office became my office, uh, where he says, uh, take time to reach across the aisle, to get to know your colleagues, have dinner with them, have drinks with them, uh, reach out to people from other parts of the state. Uh, that effort to learn about your uh, commonality and bridge your differences uh, will benefit you when you least expect it. And it, it seemed like he came back with that same type of message uh, today, that, that, that we shouldn't be divided as as at least we're perceived to be now. We are joined now by Representative Patty Bellock. Now you sit in part of Republican leadership. Right. As someone who sits from the opposite party of the president, <clears throat> what were you expecting as you walked into that chamber today? Um, exactly. To see Barack Obama, I was interested because I did serve with Barack Obama. So uh, just wanted to see how he was and it was a fantastic opportunity for all of us to be there today with a sitting president. We got a lot of information from the White House as we led up <laughs> to the interview, uh, to the, pardon me, to the address, talking a little bit about what he would address, how he would do it, and really, I don't think there were many surprises here. He didn't come with a bill in hand, with a budget plan in hand, we didn't expect that, and he didn't come and specifically scold lawmakers for not doing their jobs, but he did talk in larger themes. Do you think that's the kind of message that is going to land with lawmakers that you serve with? I do. I think a lot of people listen to what he had to say. You know, we are in a fiscal crisis in Illinois right now. Um, he didn't dwell on that as much as I thought the points that he brought out were great because they are things that all of us face every day. You know, cynicism about, you know, moving through all the political loops that we have to go through to pass a bill or to get through these budget negotiations. And I thought he hit a lot of things. The fair map, uh, a lot of us are for that. You saw that on both sides of the aisle. You know, and I think that that is something that, you know, in the future would be helpful. But um, his talk about money, his talk about, uh, you know, everything, cynicism, but also about um, responsibility to your constituency, to your constitution, to your state, and to the country. And I think that that resonates with people. It was very patriotic. You said that you worked with then State Senator Barack Obama. Uh, how was that and ha how you followed his career? He said one of the biggest regrets of his presidency is that politics have become more partisan. Uh, do you feel that way right now in the State House? Have the politics become more partisan? And what do you hope the president's message will achieve today? 
I think that uh, politics are partisan, but I think there are a lot of us that work with um, members across the aisle. I've been working all day on a bill, and you know, I have three other members from the other side of the aisle on the bill. You know? So I think there are some that do, some that don't. I think that definitely there's partisan politics, they say, especially in Washington. I think there's a lot of it here, too. But I do think that there's a lot of people that work together, the women especially. We have the Conference of Women Legislators work together all the time. You know, so that's what we need to do. We, you know, people are tired of the status quo in Illinois. People are tired of the tug of war in politics. So that's what the people say. That's what the president has encouraged people. He's been smack in the middle of it a lot of his life in politics. But that's what we have to work towards because compromise is the only way we're going to get through this. You're back in session tomorrow. What are you hoping tomorrow looks like after this? I'm hoping it's a good day. <laughs> Do you expect leadership to address the president's remarks at all, a, a call to arms, a pep rally of sorts within caucuses, or is it going to be business as usual and hope that each uh, individual lawmaker will take this to heart? I think it's more about the individual lawmakers that were sitting there. I don't think you could possibly sit in that room and not feel what he was talking about. Look around what's going on in Illinois and take what he said, you know, because it is true. He said there's cynicism, there's problems, but there's also inspiration you know him being here today as you know having gone through the system in Illinois in our own General Assembly looking at him thinking a lot of us knew him then and here he is the sitting president of the United States of America it's pretty amazing pretty thank incredible you so much, thank you all right we are going to continue our live coverage at the in news channel 20 in the state house here we'll be right over here when we come back more from from the Capitol and we have more live interviews from lawmakers stay with us you're watching Obama in Springfield. The President Returns, a News Channel 20 special report. We fought hard for our positions. And I don't want to be nostalgic here. We voted against each other all the time. And party lines held most of the time. But those relationships, that trust we built, meant that we came at each debate assuming the best in one another and not the worst. President Barack Obama talking about partisanship, having respect for the other side of the aisle and still getting things done in the Illinois Senate when he worked here from 1997 to 2004. State House reporter Jordan Evadit joining me here in the state capitol as we continue to analyze and break down President Obama's historic address. Joined now by two very special guests, State Senator Andy Menard, who got a special shout out from the president today. Representative Tim Butler, thanks so much for joining us. We have two chambers represented. We have two sides of the aisle here. Let's start on the end of the line here. Senator Menard, were you expected to be called out by the president as he talked about <laughs> some of the legislation you've, you've supported? And, uh, and what did you, uh, how did you feel when he did? Um, absolutely not. Uh, it was a total surprise to me. Um, obviously, it's, uh, you know, it's a historic visit. Uh, you know, being mentioned uh, specifically to a bill that I'm sponsoring is, you know, is a moment that doesn't happen too often. So it was a surprise. And that bill talks about access to voting. And your bill would automatically register people to vote when they get driver's license. The president says as a constituent and as someone who lives in Illinois, he wants to see that pass. Why is it important? Well, it's, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, it's good public policy. It, it literally says if you're a United States citizen, you're a registered voter. Uh, there's no in-between. Uh, it does a couple things. It, it increases uh, accuracy in our voting rolls. It saves us millions of dollars at state level, uh, millions of more dollars at the local level. And I think it uh, would drive turnout, which I think is something that we should all strive for. Representative Butler, this has been a heck of a first year for you coming in as an appointed representative here. The president had a lot of applause lines for both sides of the aisle, but there was some partisanship when certain policies were mentioned. One of those was voting, uh, changing the voting rules. Uh, did you hear from the president what you expected to? We knew that he wasn't going to come in with a budget bill in hand for lawmakers to vote on, but he did talk in general themes. And do you think that landed and, and did you expect it? I don't think the president really broke any new ground here today. A lot of these themes were things that we had heard before. Uh, what I liked about the, the president's remarks were his real emphasis on bipartisanship and working together. I think uh, those of us, uh, many of us in the General Assembly want to work together and get things done. So that was, that was certainly a good area that, that I agree with. There's certainly going to be partisan uh, differences. Uh, the president made, had a couple small jabs at Republicans during his remarks. That's to be expected. It's a, it's a partisan arena and we get it. He's a, he's a Democrat, we're Republicans. But he also, I think, uh, scolded Democrats on a few issues as well. So uh, overall, I thought, it was, I thought it was a good speech. It's always good when the president comes to your community and, and I think it was really good to see him in the Statehouse again. 
Rank and file members sometimes get frustrated. We've been hearing that throughout the halls of this Capitol for months now. We appreciate your candor, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> How are you guys dealing with working with the other side? Is, is, is it's not as partisan as it seems sometimes, right? I mean, you guys are going out and hanging out with each other, like the president mentioned today. I mean, can you talk a little bit about what it's like outside of these halls for people who just think everyone hates each other? Well, Senator Menar and I actually had a conversation today about some, some legislation that, that, that I introduced this week. So there's a lot of conversations that go on behind the scenes uh, when we're in session, when we're not in session. Uh, when we are in session and, and uh, folks are in town, we, we see each other out and about. So there's, uh, you know, I do think there's a lot more working together than people see. Now that we're back in uh, a little bit more regular session this spring, I think you'll see different bills come up that folks will be working together on, and hopefully that could lead us forward uh, to getting the big issue solved here shortly. Senator Menard, you have a little more experience here in the State House, and even more if we uh, talk about President Cullerton's staff. Dave Severson, Senator Dave Severson told me on the phone today that he thinks when both chambers went to Democrats, it started the divide in the State House. Do you think that's true? And if not, what does it take with a Democrat controlled General Assembly to start turning the tide back towards more partisan, bipartisan, pardon me, politics that the president's calling for? Well, I don't I don't know if I would agree with my colleague, Representative Severson. I respect him a lot. I don't know if I would agree with that. Um, I think certainly the past year has been overly partisan and you know we could lay blame on both sides frankly uh, for that um, and I'm not here to discuss you know who's more to blame uh, what I think is important is the president offered us a new perspective today um, he may not have broken too much new ground but I think he does uh, his, his presence here him being here him addressing the body that he came from you know he's a product of Illinois a son of Illinois product of the state Senate I would hope that tomorrow, you know, maybe we can turn a page and maybe we can work on some of these things that have just really gotten entangled in the past year and we can uh, maybe view these issues from a different angle. Before we let you guys go, we typically don't get the opportunity to get House leaders, uh, Speaker Madigan or President Cullerton, one on one, but you guys sat there and saw their faces as the president was speaking. It's rare that they're outranked in any chamber, especially here in the State House. <laughs> what was it like for everybody to be looking up at the president of the United States? Well, I think for me, uh, as an Illinoisan, it makes me proud. No matter what your feelings are on the issues with President Obama, the fact that he's an Illinoisan and served in this very institution really makes me proud. I mean, it's it's just it's a wonderful thing to see. Uh, that, that's for sure. And for you, Senator Renaud? Well, I mean, for me, you know, I was a former staffer here. I was right. an intern when he was a, a, an unpaid intern, whenever he was a member of the Senate. And, you know, watching him walk out into the House chamber um, in that capacity, you know, certainly brings back memories for me as an individual. But, you know, as, as Representative Butler said, it's a moment for us here in Illinois. It's, a, it's something that we should be proud of and try to use uh, to our advantage during these difficult times to turn a page and try some new things. Gentlemen, we appreciate your time Thank as you always. For Thanks for joining us. us. Thank a long you. day. We'll be back after the break. Stay with us. You're watching Obama in Springfield. The President Returns, a News Channel 20 special report. If we had a bill that we might be able to work together on, it was a pleasure to work with her on. For Dave Severson, who we were together on uh, Public Health and Welfare Committee. And we got some important work done that made a difference in people's lives. And we didn't call each other idiots or fascists who were trying to destroy America. Because then we'd have to explain why we were playing poker or having a drink with an idiot or a fascist <laughs> who was trying to destroy America. Boy, I love that line, bipartisanship at its finest over the poker table. State House reporter Jordan Ambedeo, you got to see the president today. What's that feel like? Uh, it was pretty awesome. I yeah. can't complain. Yeah. I, had a, I had a good gig today. Good gig today <laughs> up in the balcony as we look ahead here. Of course, we are right back here in one week for the budget address as we get into some issues that are not so fun to talk about. But, but for important today, nonetheless. politics really was on the back burner to history. Newschannel20.com for all of those sound bites, including the president's address. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.